today we'll be talking about track cleaning, um, what to do, how it works, what some of the science is, and then I'll be joining up with my friend Mike Trodd from Model Railways Unlimited to talk about how we've tested different methods and what our findings are. So why should we clean our track? What's going on here? Well, what I want to show you is a picture of, of a track, uh, part of track on my layout, uh, which I'd cleaned um, originally uh, with just some track cleaner, uh, and the trains have been running probably about a month. And what I want to show you, I don't know if you can see this, but um, I've zoomed in here, you might be able to see a little bit of a black line along there. Now I'll put this image up uh, on screen for you so you can see it a bit clearer in a sec. But what I want to show you is what is going on here. We can see that black crud and what happens to that black crud when it stays on the track for a while. You'll see on this wheel set a fair amount of black material. The other wheels around here don't have anywhere near as much um, but you might be able to see on this back one here another build up of material. Now that material can build up and be collected on our wheels to the point where I've actually seen it where there's been no flange left at all on our um, uh, wheel sets because the gunk has built up so much. The material that I removed from this wagon and that's just from one wheel tread on one wagon. So there's four of those treads. Now not everyone had material on it but you can see that material there and how it's built up. And what I'm going to do is take you through a discussion with Mike Trodd from Model, Railroad, uh, Model Railways Unlimited where we talk about what we think this material is, what we're doing about it, and how it works. Hi, Tony. Hi, Mike. How are you? Good to see you. I'm good, mate. Nice to, nice to finally see you. Yes, likewise. And, right. and good to discuss something that's um, of uh, mutual interest to our, uh, us both. Yeah, the science behind track cleaning, who, who would have thought And so we've been on quite a journey together, uh, despite the fact that we're quite a few thousand miles apart, um, <laughs> to, to, to sort out for everybody track cleaning and stop wheel cleaning and, and what the science is behind it and what that horrible muck that we all see and all have to spend time cleaning off could be. I remembered an article that I saw in Model Railroad Hobbyist around the use of polar solvents and what that might be doing to um, increase the crud that we see on our tracks because of the amount of uh, oxidation on our nickel silver, but also the trying to get down to the physics of what's going on. And that led me on a bit of a, uh, a rabbit hole um, down to understand what was the the chemical formula of the black gunk that we see on our tracks and what causes that. Um, and then what's the best way of removing it? So, And preventing it. And preventing it. Because in the end, I don't want a clean track every time I run my trains. I want a clean track maybe once every few months. And, you know, most of the time I come out and just run trains. And it would seem that the polar solvents, if I'm getting this right, actually encourage arcing, micro-arcing, and that micro-arcing blasts off tiny molecules of your track and your wheels, and then it gets oxidised. And this is the biggest percentage of the muck that we see on the track, isn't it? Yeah, so that was really interesting. A number of um, people have analysed chemically the, the black gunk because there was a lot of conjecture around it was mostly dust or hair or um, skin uh, particles etc and what they found was nearly all of it was nickel silver uh, it was nickel or silver and and so what that said was that something was happening to get rid of the material off the track and put it onto the right road so we we actually done some uh, testing now i went for wd D40 contact cleaner, not to be confused with normal WD40, which please don't put it on your track. I just beg you don't. <laughs> but this one is WD40 contact cleaner. My other chemical of choice was going to be pure, simple, lighter fluid. Now, this was what my dad was using in the 70s. And you know what? He had it right because it is a non polar solvent. 
but it does have a bit of odour. Um, I mean, this is flammable as well. Caution people, both these things are flammable, but then so is IPA. So I cleaned one circuit of my two circuit track with IPA, and I cleaned all the stock wheels and the loco wheels, and then I cleaned the other with WD-40 contact cleaner. And then using a little microscope, if I just share my screen here, Tony, is that all right with you? Yeah, go for your life. This is the track that I cleaned with the WD-40 contact cleaner. Now, it's a very low frame rate microscope, but it is quite a huge magnification, as you can see. All you're just seeing there is the, um, the metal of the track, which is pretty much what it looks like. Over to the other rail there, and we're just going to scroll down through. And already you can see these little black bits that are appearing. We think these are the micro arcing. Now, can you see that clearly, Tony? Yeah, that's excellent. It's amazing how so it's building that, up already. Yeah, already. And this was after about 50 minutes of running. I had two trains identical. Uh, it was a Batman Class 24 and uh, a Batman Class 25. Can't get much more identical. Four coaches, metal wheels, um, and they just ran for 50 minutes continuously. What um, Mike's showing you there is that that black gunk is building up on the outside of the rail. And so what we think is happening is the micro arcing is probably occurring at the, at the points where the rail and wheel are just contacting and probably not so well. So it's probably not right on the corner where that's going to be an issue. Um, it's going to be a little bit further out. And so what we think is that that micro arcing um, and the buildup is what slowly accumulates on your rails and on your wheels. So if you can reduce the amount of arcing by improving the contact between the wheel and the rail, you should reduce the amount of buildup and therefore you shouldn't have to clean your wheels anywhere near as often. Indeed. And it would seem that using the non-polar uh, cleaning solvents actually protects the track um, because it discourages the micro arcing um, and, and so therefore the oxidation. Now oxidation, that's rust, isn't it? It is rust. That's <laughs> all it is. Yeah. So, so that's what it is, people. If we're saying oxidation, it's just pot rust. Yeah. Um, but it's it's just metal turned into gunk, and this causes insulation and causes all the problems we've we've known about for many many years. And and I think it's important to say that you know people have known about this problem since the sixties. Um, there was a gentleman, Lynn Westcott, um, a model railroader in the states, who used this product called Noox ID, and this Noox ID um, uh, is used to clean contacts on electrical equipment. They use it to both clean the contacts, um, to lubricate them and to minimise further oxidation. So that's telling us a long time ago that people realised that the contact between the reel and rail was important and we needed to keep it clean and we needed to stop it from oxidising. So where Mike's using the WD-40 contact cleaner in Australia, we have that and we also have this CRC one. And I, the only reason I'm using this is I bought a bottle a while ago and I haven't finished it yet. Tony and I both use the tidy track. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's a great way of applying and you can use it to spray on the bottom of your little track cleaning car. Yeah, and I think, you know, these sold, or these these products, um, they're hydrocarbon based. So they're going to be pretty gentle on plastics because plastics are just hydrocarbons as well, like oil and petrol, et cetera. The thing that's most important, I think, about this is that they do evaporate relatively well, quickly. article in Model Rail Hobbyists, yep. um, you will see they produce a chart which goes from non-polar through to sort of mid-range to the very polar solvents. Right. Now, very polar is water, so you wouldn't be spraying water on your track to keep your track the clean. polar solvents um, are charged at one end. So if you think of water, you've got two hydrogen atoms and an oxygen atom. And the oxygen atom is sort of at the point of a triangle, and that's where a lot of the electrical charge is. And so that's why water is a very good solvent. It dissolves mm. all sorts of things, you know. Um, and the same with IPA and acetone. You know, they're very strong polar solvents, um, and they work well that way. The things that we're using in here are hydrocarbons, and hydrocarbons are just lots of carbon molecules and hydrogen molecules bonded together and they don't have that charge on them and that charge 
is what actually starts the oxidation process. So that's why it, it, it sort of makes sense from the science point of view. It's making sense from the, the chemical and physical um, approaches, and it's born the test of time. Uh, it definitely would seem to be the way forward. Like Tony said, don't like to recommend things to the, to the world in general. This is just our own opinions, of course, but it seems to be based in solid scientific fact. And uh, it seems to work. We've done the tests. Wouldn't come to you unless we had. So it's up for you to go out there and have a little look yourselves. Yep. And, you know, I think for the foreseeable future, we'll still be running electricity through our rails to power our trains. There is the, obviously the, the dead rail movement, um, you know, that's using batteries and that's getting um, uh, more traction here and there. And I, I actually have a garden railway where I use battery power simply because I don't want to clean the track outside, you know. Um, <laughs> So, you know, I don't think I'd go through, you know, a dozen cans of this a week if I if I was um, doing it through uh, yeah. DCC or DC. So, you know, there, there's certainly those things, but I, I reckon DCC and DC are going to be around for a lot longer yet. And while that continues to be the case, wouldn't it make sense to try and minimise the, the oxidation and improve the contact for the electricity so you know that's uh, that's all we're trying more to say time playing trains rather than cleaning track so yep and that's what it's all about everything. so thanks um to mike uh for um working with me to set up this uh discussion around um, the different methods we've used to clean our track and the different products that we've tried what i want to show you now is um a few of the other things that i use around my track now, on the video, we both showed you how we use these Woodland Scenics tidy tracks, and I really like them for being able to clean on the rails. Um, they, they just run across the surface. If you've got some things like crossings and stuff like that, they're very useful in terms of uh, just running across the surface. And so I usually use this product, um, or use this device um, for cleaning my hidden storage sidings um, my, um, and the whole of the layout and as we saw before with the, C the CRC contact cleaner I'll spray a bit of this on the uh, pads, the felt pads here and I can use that around the layout uh, and I find it to be really good at cleaning the track. Um, I've uh, modified this was a German track cleaning uh, wagon just this center component here and I actually chopped it up, up and put it underneath this old um, Barkman brake van that I had um, and I take that around it's got a couple of weighted uh, uh, um, levers there that you put some felt pads on and those felt pads I put a bit of that contact cleaner on and it works a real treat now um, a lot of people have talked about track magic. Um, I use track magic mostly just to clean areas where I have uh, a bit of poor contact um, around points um, and it works really well. But the challenge that I see with track magic is that um, it is um, slightly polar. Now, one thing that I've been very interested in, there's a product called Deoxit ID. Um, this is very similar, um, uh, sorry, deoxid, um, it's called. It's used a lot in the music industry to clean contacts, etc., and it adds a little bit of lubrication. Um, our local electronic store here in Australia called JCAR has this product, um, which is an electrical clean and lubrication. And so it cleans and lubricates electrical contacts and mechanisms and prevents oxidization. It does leave a bit of a residue, and so if you've got some grades on your layout, like I have, what you might find is that um, you lose a bit of traction. Another track cleaning car that I also use is this one by Centerline Products. Um, and this one has a roller that just sits down on the track and it's got a bit of a cleaning cloth on it that's held on with a rubber band. And that rolls along as the wagon rolls along and cleans the track as well. So you can use that, and I run that around every now and again, but you might have seen I've just got a bit of um, uh, a rag there that I've been using. Uh, I use this rag quite a bit just for cleaning spot uh, areas up, and it's very useful in terms of just putting on a bit of um, uh, contact cleaner and wiping the track down. Finally, um, I want to just talk about um, how you clean the wheels on your Lycos. Now, 
what I've done with this is to actually, this is based on a track cleaner by a friend of mine, um, uh, Max, down in South Australia. I'm not sure if you're still in the hobby, Max, but um, Max w uh, built this really useful uh, track cleaner for cleaning DCC powered locos. Basically, it's three strips of wire along here, and then this cleaning cloth is underneath the first wire, over the first rail, underneath the middle wire, over the next rail, and then underneath the third bit of wire. Using these alligator clips, I just connect that straight to the rail, like so, and then this is powered. I can run my DCC locos up here, put a bit of contact cleaner on here, and run the rails uh, the wheels of the loco over here. Now um, that has worked exceptionally well. The dirt that you can see here came off one loco. I do a lot of DCC installations and repairs for people and recently I was asked to um, uh, fix a loco that had some uh, gummy sound on it and the first thing that I did was clean the wheels. Um, so you can see here um, that's just from one loco. So keeping your track clean is important. Keeping the wheels clean on your locos is that also important. gives you important. a bit of an overview of what to do. The other thing you might want to try, um, this is another Woodland Scenics product. It's called a Dust Devil. Um, I stick them under a few of my brake vans and run them around on my trains regularly. Um, maybe they are not, <laughs> they don't appear that prototypical, but to be honest, when they're running around, I don't notice them. Maybe when I do some more videos, etc., I will um, take a few of them off or run some vans that don't have them on, but I run those around regularly and it just helps to keep the track clean. So, maintaining your layout. What do you need to do? Keep your wheels clean, keep your track clean, use a non polar solvent, uh, and trial a few methods and see what works for you. What I will say is steer away from polar solvents like IPA, steer away from products like CRC and WD-40 uh, lubricants and, and water displacement products. I know a lot of people use them and some people swear by Inox and others. Personally, while they work, what they do is leave a fairly significant amount of residue on the track and that will be carried around your whole layout. That's going to be an attractant for dirt and dust and it's going to slowly build up and it'll have to be removed. The CO contact cleaner is about, and, and the other contact cleaners like this electrical clean and, and lubrication, is simply about trying to get rid of that material and improve the connectivity between the wheel and the rail. Because in the end, if we can do that, we'll have better running trains.